Hi everyone, as promised, here is part two of that video where I discuss how I used recycled, vintage, and antique, and some modern, some new stuff, ephemera, but the idea is recycling, as well as you can mix in some like newer items if you have them, but basically everything you see here is recycled. Um, to create items that one would put into a junk journal lookbook. So let's get right into it. It's part two, so this should be something that we can finish up pretty quickly. So Goya has some amazing labels on their cans. And I was making a curry, and as I was making that curry, got a glimpsey of this one and decided to make a notebook out of it. If you guys know me well enough, you'll know that one of the things I like putting into my journals are these little ragtag um, notebooks, which I make out of scrap paper. So there could be writing on the back of the paper. The rest of the paper could have printing. I rip out the part that's usable um, and create these various little notebooks which are great in your purse or obviously in your journals and I include them in the journals that I make and I'm going to take this right now because it keeps falling but let's look at the other notebooks so this notebook is one that I made from a textbook and yes history the history actually came from an AARP magazine, believe it or not, and they were talking about ancestry or something like that in it. And this is a piece of washi tape. And I just, oh, and this piece at the very bottom came from an, a book about the Nile, which I've talked about previously. These are little pieces of paper that I cut out of a book where the majority of the paper was used at the top but not at the bottom so I just recovered the good parts at the bottom recycled the remainder this is from a Ferrera Rocher jewel box um, when you buy the candy as a gift it, they come in these really cool jewel boxes which I then use the boxes for my button collection and here we have that famous you know how I love those autograph pages in books. So that's what this is. So these things are right here, those two items completely recycled. Here's another one that's completely recycled. So you know, I don't know if you guys do this, but in my books, I like to put papers that are different shapes and sizes. So I it requires me to sometimes cut off parts of the paper. So I have these larger rectangles and what I did is I folded them in a way so that they folded over the top as just this like sort of a stacked or collage design. And I, this is actually from one of those paper books that people buy. I had, and I this is like one of my famous stories, but now it's happened twice. I believe it was that time maybe 200 and some odd pieces of paper that I was able to purchase for three dollars and some of them were at they were actually like two partial books and this was a cover on one of them so I just took the cover chopped off everything I didn't think was usable and instead of just throwing it away I used it to make this notebook I added the sentiment which I actually got out of a little religious um like mailing that my mother used to get and there were maybe 20 or 30 of those little like notebooks they're not even notebooks but hold on for one minute isn't it a real hassle when the fake criminal minded telemarketers because they're not legit telemarketers call you and tell you something that's completely not true but anyway um, that one was calling to ask us to support a police fund. My husband and brother and various family members are in law enforcement and those folks that are calling you on the phone are not legit. Do not give them your money. 
Anyway, so there, I can't, I don't know, I think it's called um, Bits and Pieces, something like that. And they sometimes have these really nice quotes in them by different people. And so I cut them out and I also have a couple books that I received for free. Um, I actually got them myself because there's a place where I get books for free. And I love when I can find books that have like quotes in them and then I go through to see which ones I like, cut them out. And then I just sort of highlighted it here with some um, marker. And that's actually a highlighting marker for this one. And so I added it to the cover. And then the triangles, I just sort of, you know, put them in here. You can put them in any way you want. I Every other one I turned a different way so that it would have like this bandana effect on the back. And this is probably one of my favorite notebooks that I've created. And do I have another notebook? No, yes I do. There's another notebook here. This one is definitely ragtag. Um, it's created out of, as you can see, a seed packet. So if you know people like me who garden, ask them for their leftover seed packets after they're done instead of them being thrown away or even recycled. You can use them in these um, projects. And I know that you can buy plain seed packets online and then decorate them any way you want, but why do that if you can get them already done up and also legit because they're authentic <laughs> seed packets and they were actually used and you're helping to recycle. So here I had a leftover piece of lace. This is like a 1960s um, piece of lace and I just use black permanent marker where you see the highlighting. This came from a greeting card and then you flip it up and you have this rainbow, which is a collection of paint samples. I added a little jewel there. This came from a greeting card. Flip it down, secret note area. And this is from this same greeting card. And I hung it partially off the edge. Like I said, I notice that a lot of times people are really lining things up. Sometimes, I mean, life is about dimension. And everything is definitely, thank goodness, not a straight line. So, you know, go a little off the edge a bit. And then what I did with the seed packet is this is once again part of an autograph page from a book. And underneath there's a secret little area for you to hide some of your treasures. So you could turn it this way and put your treasures in there. And then this is actually from the Christopher Reed Reeves Foundation. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he played um, Superman in, I'm going to say the 1980s movies, and he was so, so incredibly handsome. And him and his wife had the ultimate love story. And then here, this is one a clear sticker that says Ideas. I put that on there, and this is what the back looks like. And once again, these are just scraps of paper so instead of having a random and these are actually cutoffs from mailing labels so the like half of the paper would print the label the other half would be clear so I just took the other half and put it together into this notebook so once again great additions to your journals this is from a book um, and it's actually from a, a French book and it had this book had some amazing pictures in it, just amazing. In the book dated to 1897, the condition of the book highly sketch, like there was so much water damage. Um, but this is a book, if it wasn't water damaged, would definitely have some value. But the water damage basically probably gave it a value of two or three dollars max. And I was able to get the book for nothing. So I recovered the book and cut out all the interesting pictures and adverts and things that I saw in it. And yeah, so this is a card that I created. Once again, I actually used a different book's back. Like this is from a different book, but this paper is almost cardboardy. And then I used it to mount this particular picture and you can see the decorative edges. I highlighted all the way around. And yeah, I felt like the picture was a thousand words, so it did not need a lot of help. Here is 
another little thing that I created. And what I did is used a button. Of course, you know me in this embroidery thread, a notebook paper reinforcement, some fancy paper from one of my paper hauls. You open it up and you have a place for notes. And yes, you guys know that in my books, um, I'm also one of my s signature moves besides little notebooks is to add a pop up. So there is a pop up and here is a pocket right back here. Let's see. Let's use our card. You can put, you know, some extra and you can see it's a decent sized pocket for some extra storage. Um, this is actually from the same French book, and I simply used markers um, to highlight it with yellow, and I sewed this in by hand um, because I believe in hand sewing. It's just my vibe. It's my jam. And inside, obviously, I always try to put another button when I can, if it makes sense, so that when you open it, it's not just a knot. And yes, you saw how I tied this through so that it would make a way of keeping this closed. And then you simply go around the button. You could go around the bottom or the top, whatever you are comfortable with. And I left the back as is because the intention is that this is going to be um, glued down in a book that I'm making. And here we have, let's do another pop-up. So we have this pop-up and the way my pop-ups work, um, I like to cut out shapes in them. I like to colorize or highlight, apologies for that camera hit, um, where I can. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't wanna go overboard because I want you to be able to actually open them up and write in them. But I do try to do more than just fold the paper in and glue it in. So the idea is it would be glued on this side and this side so that when you open the pages, you get this effect. And I've shown you guys this in some of my books. So this is one that I created, of course. Here is another one that works a little bit differently. You only need to glue on the little tab here and here. So those two sides glue down. And when you open the book and you glue them on opposing pages and when you and you do have to make sure your spacing is correct. And then when you open it, it opens like this and allows you to make notes. So you have a secret place for making notes. Here is another one that I made. This one is a double. So I actually imagine like two of these, but I glued them together. And this one opens like so. So you get true pop-up form there. And this one is honestly more visual than it is functional for writing um, because it just is. It has a lot to it. But there are ways that you can actually connect multiples of these and actually make them into almost like an accordion notebook. And obviously lots of cutouts in that one. Actually, I'll even let you see. There's a heart. This one is an upside down heart. And this one is supposed to look like a bird, but my husband and said it also can look sort of like an angel, but I think it looks more like a bird, but it is what it is. And then what we have here is another... <laughs> Happy Carnival of Delights. And this one, um, I have a bunch of vintage and antique motorcycle advertising from magazines, calendars, um, newsletters, cards, um, cigarette cards. I have a whole collection that I purchased from someone for, I believe it was $12. And there are hundreds of pieces so I started using and you guys have seen I think a couple motorcycle pieces and my um journals that I have sh shared on this page as a tour but what I did is these actually came from a newsletter and I simply carefully cut them out pink stinky I like actually like 
cutting out the pieces. So I do like going around all the little corners and pieces and bobs and such. But it is something that you want to take your time with so that you don't like lop off a hand or a hat. Notice how even his little finger is pointing out. But I cut them out and then I colorize them because they were just in black and white. It, is, it was a, I believe, 1950s newsletter after all. And so what I did is simply using um, permanent marker. Um, I just went in and lightly colorized these and glued them on top of, <laughs> talk about a juxtaposition, a Panasonic Audio limited warranty um, <laughs> mailing. So you would actually fill this out and you would mail it in. And I think that this was for... I don't, I don't know if I know what this was for. I feel as if this was for, and that this one is from 1972, but I think it was for, for a boom box or a um, stereo system. And so here, what I have is a pocket of, you know me in the storage, a pocket. So she's on a pocket. And I'll look at, show you this later. And you can see what this is made out of, this whole thing, the base of it, is when you had notebooks and you would put the notebook separators in it so you knew what chapter or if it was a subject matter, you could write on the little tab what the subject matter was. That is what this is, recycled, because we have several, like we have several bundles of these from back in the day. So I found a way to use them to make these little, I guess I'm going to call them file folders, sort of. And it's a hack, if you will, on a file folder. And then what I did is also added this space here as a pocket. And imagine you could have a bunch of these and you could actually cover this and put a subject. So you could put a subject on them and put them into your journals. And then on the back, uh, you know me and a sentiment is always awesome and I decided to keep the edges of this paper here I just thought it was interesting no need to cut it off and have little snippets and it is nice to be recognized and on the back for your protection the 1972 Consumer Safety Product Act and so yeah I made that one and it's one that I also like a lot um, as something just as an addition and I just thought it was super cute because you have this grass and then when you open it up you have bunnies they're so cute and I got these from obviously a children's book that was dated I think in the 1930s but the book was in such horrible condition I salvaged it and cut out all the pictures and things I knew I would use the covers completely unusable unfortunately so I tossed those but I did create this with a bunch of fancy cutouts I highlighted the seams or the folds on the left and the right sides I decided to simply cut these bunnies out painstakingly um, to get all their details so I cut them off you know out of a page and then cut all around all these little bits and bobs and pieces and glued them in here created like a half circle sort of like a gate is the idea of this and I even highlighted of course as I told you I like finishing all these edges off with some sort of color simple this can be put in a book as is, it can be glued in, it can go over a page, it is, you know, whatever the user wants it to be. And then here is the last one that I will show you. This one, yes, you see some Panasonic hitting the screen again. I'm bringing them back. And this piece is made from obviously part of a manual page of a Panasonic um, just listing all their services and stuff but what I did you could see the back is white and plain but what I did to spice it up on the front is I highlighted it with some yellow paint and then I added this what I considered to be sort of like a little strap and I made a slot for it so it can go through this hole or slot and stay closed. 
I added some stickers, open it up, and I don't know if you guys remember or how old you are, but back in the day they had um, these clubs where you could order a bunch of CDs. I remember it started with records and then it went to cassettes and then it went to CDs and then it, and, and DVDs. And these are DVDs of various movies. I think that most of these movies are from like the 80s and the 90s. And so I decided to use those stickers on this and this in the back, this whole the like I would call it the foundation of this is a junk mail envelope or just envelope from the mail that we received, recovered that and then I covered it with this um, bubbly circular like featured paper. Up at the top, I added a different paper, did some fancy cutting and highlighting. And how do you get into this one? Let's, oh, here we go, right through here. Do I have anything I could put in there? I think so. So it goes all the way down. I don't have, actually, here you go. So it goes all the way down to the bottom. And in the middle, yes, you can like sort of put a, something that you want to highlight as a picture or a photograph, or you could just fill this up with random stuff. Obviously, it's up to the user. And I showed you the back already, but I'll show you again. Nothing special, but I did carry the highlight to the back as well. And this is one that I think I would, if you know, I would just glue it down probably on a page and let it be a feature that way. So anyway, as you can see, simply using things that you have around the house, um, things that you can ask your friends, your family, etc., to collect for you, give them a little basket, ask them, you know, to fill it up. And when they do, you know, you'll give them a vis visit or either give them some money, like, and it's only going to cost, like, I'm gonna say, maybe between three and five dollars for a pretty heavy box of a couple of pounds of stuff to be sent to you and you would um, I think be able to send them media mail through the United States Postal Service so it costs very little to do this and also you're saving you know things from the landfills in addition you are hopefully you know coming up with some really cool and interesting ideas that are not going to be as obvious as if you just purchase something in the mail like a sticker and you you know put it down on your creation like there's other ways for you to get creative but also do it you know I, and I hate when people say responsibly like I mean there are people who are totally irresponsible but a lot of people just don't realize they're just you know thinking a different way so if you think in a different way that's totally fine but it's also better if you can sort of you know just decide you know what's what can you recycle like before you throw that thing in the bin and also I always warn about this please don't suddenly become a hoarder because that creates a completely different problem and, you know, I always say if you're not going to use the stuff within like a couple of weeks, then you probably should not, you know, bring it, keep it or bring it into your house. Like you should probably just leave it exactly where it is unless you have definite plans. Like let's say it's August, but you know that in December you're going to start making stuff for November, for let's say February, which is Valentine's month. That's probably fine as long as you know that you are disciplined enough and you will definitely do that. Um, so when I'm talking about like, you know, recycling and stuff like that, and you can also hoard new things. I know um, some of the projects that we've been on have been full of nothing but brand new items all over the place, still in a box, never used, and they either end up in a landfill or thankfully there are times that things can be recovered, recycled, resold, etc. But anyway, thank you guys for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have any suggestions, any ideas, anything you would like to see, questions of course. 
but also remember I am giving away a bunch of items in November. November 15th is a cutoff date. All you have to do to enter for these free items, I paid the postage, I've done these giveaways before, and to enter, just subscribe to this channel, share our videos, leave a comment down below, and a thumbs up is always helpful. Now, someone asked me where would they share the videos? With other groups that you're part of, like on Facebook, um, you can share my links on Instagram. Um, there's a lot of places where you can share. But thank you guys so much. Remember that your health is your wealth, and without your health, you have absolutely nothing. Please enjoy your day.